I'm Lori. This is Manny. This is our Jack Russell terrorist, Lucy. <laughs> I got Lucy in March about 10 years ago. She um, loves to play, loves to squeak. Well, she, she loves toys. toys, squeaky toys. I mean, she, she just cannot get enough of them. I just happen to like the name Lucy because of the Lucille Ball. And he wanted to come home and say, Lucy, I'm home. <laughs> How many times have you done that? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. We were out of town and I get this phone call from my mom and she said, something's not right. She's not playing, she's not eating, and she's not Lucy. She had been fine the day before, so I said, well, we'll be home in a few minutes or a few hours. You know, it's, it's not a big deal. It's probably just a tummy ache. We go to pick her up, and her lymph nodes were just huge in her neck. And we're like, okay, <laughs> this is not right. So we saw Lucy the first time in November of 2011, and she went to her veterinarian first, who did some basic blood work, looking for some infectious diseases, found that she had a fever at that time, and felt with the information that they had that they needed a little more workup done at a specialty center, so she was sent to us to work up those problems. We ended up doing some imaging exams, some more blood work, lab work, and basically we're not able to find a reason from the initial tests that we did for why the lymph nodes were big and why her white cell count was low. We ended up taking a sample of her bone marrow to look at the white cells and we discovered that she had an immune mediated problem which causes destruction of the early precursors of those white blood cells. It's called an immune mediated neutropenia. So she was treated for that um, and just before we had got the diagnosis back for the bone marrow aspirate, she also developed a polyarthritis, so bad inflammatory response of multiple joints. So she had many different conditions going on at that same time. Well, we were devastated. I mean, here we had this little wild child that we lived with and she was dying. I mean, she wasn't eating, she was vomiting, she just was not, she wasn't really responding and we thought for sure we were gonna lose her. So we start a, a drug called prednisone. Along with that drug, we start another immunosuppressant drug, which takes a little bit longer to start working. So that by the time the side effects of the prednisone have really kicked in, we've got another drug on board. She had developed diabetes and pancreatitis and came in again a few months later, very sick from complicated diabetes. So we were not able to continue those medications because they make those, that disease worse. The diabetes becomes worse on steroids. She's had lots of treatments. <laughs> She's been hospitalized many times over the last year and a half. During that hospitalized stay, she also developed another immune-mediated problem with her skin. And so we biopsied her skin at that time and it came back suggestive of a skin disorder related to the immune system. So now we have three different immune-mediated problems in one patient and needed to put her on a different medication that hopefully would not make her diabetes or pancreatitis worse. She's had pancreatitis twice, I think. She's had diabetic ketoacidosis a couple of times. She's had liver issues. We started her on a different drug called cyclosporin, and she did fantastic on that. All of her symptoms of all of her diseases went away. Her diabetes was well controlled on that drug for about five months. And then she came in at the end of last year in December um, vomiting and not feeling well again. So we sent a biopsy of her liver out and that came back suggestive of a toxicity. So we had to stop the cyclosporin. All of her other diseases had been well controlled at that time, the immune mediated conditions that she had. So I felt comfortable stopping that medication. And when we did, her liver disease resolved and she was feeling great for another couple of months until her next problem developed, which we found was an obstruction of her common bile duct. So she had surgery to remove her gallbladder, place a stent to be able to allow bile to drain into the small intestine. Since then, she's been doing fantastic. She's recovered very well. She is blind. She has cataracts from her diabetes. And so when you look at her, um, she doesn't react to her surroundings like a normal dog would because she can't see very well. So a lot of that can kind of complicate our interpretation. But really what it comes down to is how willing she is to play with her toys. That has been a very big indicator to us about how well or not well she's feeling. And really that's a big indicator for us that she's feeling well if she's squeaking on her toys. We made a conscious decision to try and keep her as independent as possible. We just let her 
find her own way. She's happy. She wakes up every morning squeaking her toy. She comes in the bedroom with her toy in her mouth. Let's get up, let's get going. She's a great quality of life. <laughs>